Hey everybody, thank you for watching Leaf by Leaf. I just finished playing a game of tennis and whenever I do that uh, and I come home all sweaty and with my hat on and so on, I always think about David Foster Wallace who himself uh, was quite a tennis player. I think he made it so far uh, in like an amateur division or something like that. I don't know what they're called. Um, but anyway, he, he has, he has some, some essays where he gets deeply philosophical and also into physics with tennis that are uh, incredible reads. I think maybe it's in uh, a supposedly fun thing I'll never do again, um, but maybe not. This is my David Foster Wallace collection, uh, The Pale King, which was published posthumously, the essay collection, supposedly fun, supposedly fun thing I'll never do again, Consider the Lobster, Oblivion, um, and then, of course, Infinite Jest, The Broom of the System, which was his first novel, uh, and then his compact history on Infinity, uh, which is his coming out of his degree in the math, uh, philosophy of mathematics. Um, I love the title, Everything and More. What, what a great title for a study of philosophy. But I just want to talk for a moment about his little speech, This is Water. Uh, he delivered this speech to the graduating class at Kenyon College in 2005, uh, which happens to be three years before he himself committed suicide. Um, and there's even a portion in here uh, where he says, It is not the least bit coincidental that adults who commit suicide with firearms nearly always shoot themselves in the head. And the truth is that most of these suicides are actually dead long before they pull the trigger. Uh, he gets into a lot of that also in Infinite Jest. He talks a lot about being dead within life um, and so on. Uh, he did not shoot himself in the head, if I, if I remember correctly, he hanged himself. But, um, you know, he was on antidepressants a lot and so on. But just, he had a beautiful mind. And this commencement speech, which uh, was published in this little hardcover by Little Brown, it's available for free to read, and I think there's even a recording of David Foster Wallace himself delivering the speech online. Um, but I like owning this little paper, uh, sorry, this little hardcover, um, and I've read through it many, many times. The way that they've done it is they put basically a sentence or a phrase um, on each page. So it's very readable. It, pro it takes about 15 minutes uh, to get through, depending on your reading speed. But it's, it's everything... It's all the major themes that you get from his books all condensed down into one commencement speech three years uh, before his death. Um, there's also another great commencement speech also to uh, the class of Kenyon College by uh, the creator of Calvin and Hobbes, Bill Watterson, or Watterson. Um, I highly, highly recommend it. I think the title is something like... Uh, thoughts from a guy who glimpsed the real world and fled or something like that. But he talks about how he got a real job and a real job is a job you hate. So he just went after this, you know, his comic strip and they end up hitting it big time. Uh, so I highly recommend that as well. Uh, but if we just look at, at some of these thoughts uh, within his speech, because we prize tolerance and diversity of belief, nowhere in our liberal arts analysis do we claim that one guy's interpretation is true and the other guy's is false or bad. Which is fine, except we also never end up talking about just where these individual templates and beliefs come from. Meaning, where they come from inside the two guys. So he takes cherished beliefs and then kind of tilts them uh, to show uh, a layer that needs focus. Um, he's talking about uh, religious dogmatists here. They are probably even more repulsive than atheists, at least to most of us here. But the fact is that religious dogmatists' problem is exactly the same as the atheists. Arrogance, blind certainty, a closed-mindedness that's like an imprisonment, imprisonment so complete that the prisoner doesn't even know he's locked up. So he, you know, he, David Foster Wallace is great about leveling the playing field. And then another little nugget, he talks about if, you know, if you, if you pin freedom to luxury, money, uh, beauty, youth, and so on, you're, you're going to die. You're going to be dead in the water and, and in, enslaved more than free. And he says the really important kind of freedom involves attention and awareness and discipline and effort and being able truly to care about other people and to sacrifice for them over and over in myriad 
petty little unsexy ways every day. And, you know, I just pointed out a few things, but he, he is the master, uh, not only of his rhetoric, you know, his maximalist rhetoric, where he's just, his turns of phrase and how he just keeps adding uh, comma after comma after comma um, and digressing and so on, but always bringing it back to illuminate uh, a great, great uh, deep point. Uh, that is very much alive in his speech, but he is also the master of creating these real world examples. And I think that's where his essay collections shine because most of them are done for like Harper's Magazine and so on. And he goes on assignment to, to do something like going to uh, a lobster festival in Maine uh, or going on a cruise and then writing about his experience. And it's so just real life and detailed um, at the at a level that we all know. As soon as he starts giving these examples, like in the speech, he gives examples of uh, you know, huge SUVs running people off the road and, you know, pumping CO2 into the atmosphere without a care. People at the grocery mart uh, upset. And we can all relate to these. But then he shows us the side of it that we're overlooking. And he wants to bring, give us, bring us to a place where we give more attention to the mundane things, uh, to be more aware, more self-aware, uh, to the point where we're careful about how we live. So... Uh, if you've never read it, I highly, highly recommend his commencement speech in 2005 to the graduating class of Kenyon College. Um, so, a big salute to David Foster Wallace and uh, everything he left us with. Um, a beautiful, beautiful mind and a sad loss uh, for the literary community and mankind.